The activity of Georgian writer Mikhail Javakishvili coincided with one of the most difficult periods when Georgia fell victim to Bolshevik aggression and found itself in the grip of Soviet totalitarianism. Totalitarianism as a forced form of government is based on creation and formation of ideological cliches, which naturally considerably limits the boundaries of literature as well as creative freedom. From 1921, the period of Sovietization of Georgia, modernism and European literary taste, which had already been established and rooted in Georgian literature, turned out to be in fundamental contradiction with the new standards, the new ideology, the conception of Bolshevism as an idea which resulted in the degradation of the idea of integrity of culture. As a result, two camps came into being, the camps of so-called our own people and the disobedience. In the situation, the young Soviet authorities were free to aggrandize our own people and punish the disobedient. Exactly in the camp of the disobedient, Mikhail Javakishvili will find himself, a Georgian writer who will be put to death by the authorities of Stalin and Beria in 1937. It will not be overstated to say that by the scale of his thought, his artistic mastery, Mikhail Javakishvili, is no inferior to and equals his contemporary authors, Marcel Proust, James Joyce, Thomas Mann, Mikhail Bulgakov, Vladimir Nabokov, Knut Samson, and others. What makes Javakishvili so outstanding? Primarily the fact that he is a writer who has a crossroads when he had to work turned out to have a unique ability to merge the realistic manner of vision and reflection with the aesthetic principles of high modernism. Precisely this was the basis of European literature of that period and Mikhail Javakishvili implemented this project in his work absolutely brilliantly. This path of fundamental transformation was described and overcome in their time by Ovid, Dante, Rustavelli, Shakespeare, Cervantes, Dostoevsky, Ibsen. The intuition of a great writer does not fail Mikhail Javakishvili either. It is of course possible to mention his numerous texts as illustration when we are speaking exactly about the process of merging and combining of these values. Mikhail Javakishvili as a writer, a creator, is naturally not satisfied with the reality in which he lives and acts. He does not like the world in which he has to work and hence is oriented towards elaboration of an alternative. If you do not like the reality, you should develop an alternative, such as the principle of many great writers of that period, and Mikhail Javakishvili too is realizing exactly this principle. To achieve this, as was noted above, he is merging two approaches, two methods, the realistic manner of reflection and the aesthetic principles of modernism. What do we mean? We mean that at the period when Mikhail Javakishvili is writing his great novels and stories, the realistic manner of reflection inherited from European and Georgian classical writers is still in force, which naturally assists Mikhail Javakishvili as a writer to depict the surrounding reality with maximum accuracy and also to accentuate the main result of this brutal reality, total estrangement of a personality, an individual from his self and aspiration towards a self-localization. But Mikhail Javakishvili does not stop here. One thing is posing a question, and another is representation of the question. For the purpose of exactly representation, he resorts to modernist aesthetics and the principal characteristics of modernist literature. To elucidate what is implied in this, we will offer a very brief overview of his brilliant novel, Jachos Hiznebi, Jachos Disposist. The main character of this novel, 
is time, brutal time, the reality in which the writer has to live, whereas the intention of the novel, the main purpose, the aim, is elaboration of an alternative which can be opposed to this time. In this way, the essence of the novel can be formulated very briefly. The central character of the novel is Teimura's Hevistavi. The author will introduce him to us on the very first pages as a former man, former prince, former landowner, former public figure, and former lawyer. Or if we follow in the reverse direction, once Teimura's was a man, master, prince, landowner, public figure, and lawyer, which he is no longer today. It is quite clear that Teimuraz is from the outset a character imprinted with a sign of time. He is from the outset an individual defined by time, caught in the grip of time and locked in time, who cannot find a way out from this prison. Objective time, in the captivity of which Teimuraz is completely, is determined in the text by certain quantitative and qualitative indices. From the quantitative viewpoint, this is a time extended in newly Sovietized Georgia and counting a few months. As regards its qualities, the past is wandering like a ghost in the novel and is lying as a load on the present, the inhabitants of which are moving mechanically like a flock of sheep toward the future, the future marked with the sign of collectivization, which is so important for the Bolshevik ideology. Teimuraz does not understand the present and does not understand the future at all, and exactly with time, the present and the future, this uncertain, his struggle with time, his struggle with the reality begins, to which his entire novel of 200 pages will be devoted. The beginning of the conflict of Teimuraz Khevistawi with time, the roaring of the defective engine of time makes him lose his faith altogether and great estrangement begins between him and so-called world. Teimuraz is locked in the spherical prison of time, all exist from which are blocked and the main guard of which is the antagonist of this novel, Jaco Jivashvili. And here is Jaco, who is introduced by the author into the novel with an amazingly detailed description. And in order to complete the portrait of Jaco, the main antagonist, he will use a characteristic method of high modernism, in particular the mythological model of Satan. Introducing of the mythological model of Satan into the text he, and showing this parallel in the text of course suggests to an observant reader in what a direction the writer is leading his reasoning. Jaho is associated with this satanic energy. Let us recall very briefly his features. This is a man who has a scared face covered with black and disabled bird, whose hair grows on his shoulders like tar. Javahishvili uses exactly this word, tar, and who is stinking disgustingly. We remember that after the visit of Jaho Jivahvili, Teimuraz is airing the house for several days in order to remove this odor from his house. One of the successful researchers of the myth of Satan, Maximilian Rodwin, writes, when a modernist author is trying to introduce the myth of Satan into a text, he introducing exactly these characteristics, blackness, stink, and stoutness. Yes, stoutness by which Jaho is distinguished so much from Teimuraz, who is characterized by complete paleness and lightness. As we already noted, every attempt of Teimuraz to escape from this evil energy 
is vain and one more myth is introduced into the text this time the myth of Agasfer by means of which the author is trying to develop and put to the foreground the portrait of Taimuras. As we remember, Agasfer is a character published by a mythological punishment, who is lacking the privilege of dying and is doomed to move and roam in a circle until the second coming of the Savior. We should recall from the text of the novel how Taimuras Hevestavi is moving inside a circle who, accordingly to the author, began to resemble a Jew lately. In this way, Hevestavi is moving in a circle from city Gori uh, to the village Levanasheni, from Levanasheni to Nashindari, back, and totally to no avail. There is no way out. He appears to be damned like Agasfer, and he is returning to the initial point from which he started his movement all the time. And this initial point is Jaco's house and yard, which once belonged to Taimura's family. The question is why? Why Taimuraz is returning to Jaco all the time? Why he fails to escape from his captivity? We will borrow an answer from Lotman. Jaco and Taimuraz are a binary opposition of this text, a binary opposition attached to a single stem, exactly which represents the countersense of the novel, whereas the stem is time, time on which the author's attention is focused constantly. Jaco and Taimuraz are two characters, however time bones. They are totally different from each other, but they are bonded, and their conflict represents the main idea of this novel. Taimuraz's every attempt to escape from Jaco is vain, and this, of course, reminds us an outstanding text by Albert Camus, The Myth of Sisyphus. This is a clash of human cry and the quiet that drives the world mad, a split between a man and silence, between an actor and decoration. Therefore, we should not be surprised if in the process of solving this existential dilemma, Mikhail Javakishvili again and again returns to the aesthetics of modernism and establishes in the text the double of Taimura the alter ego of Taimuraz. As we are aware, appearance of the double is a tried method. This is a partition board which the author creates in his character and divides his character into two parts. Naturally, the double of Taimuraz will never agree with him. The appearance of the double of Taimuraz determines a lot of subsequent actions. As noted of this, the most important is the jumping of Taimuraz in water, in Werplur, exactly. This is dictated to him by the empirical uh, Double. This is attempt to suicide. It is clear that here an observant reader will ask the question, why actually the author did not end his novel at this point? Wouldn't it have been much simple to draw this former man and former lawyer and prince and public figure in water and to liberate him from his personal hell and liberate this society from this useless man? But Jawaheshwili is not a writer who asks simple questions and gives simple answers. Taimuraz must survive, as exactly by means of his emerging from water, the main statement is made by the author himself. Hevistavi must escape from death because the episode of possible death makes the brutal reality understandable and alternative possible. Exactly after the coming out from water, the blood circulation in the body of Taimuraz Hevistavi, as it were, becomes more intensive. He begins to go deeper into himself, to go deeper into his genetic roots, the values coded 
in him, and very interesting process starts when Teimuraz Hevistavi moves into the path of a rebellious captive. Teimuraz begins to feel his own strength and energy. He understands that he can find the strength and energy which will relieve his estrangement from the reality and will make it possible his spiritual survival. The episode of entrance of Teimuraz into the charge is absolutely crucial in the novel. When he listens to the parable of the adulteress and makes the main conclusion in his life, the conclusion is as follows. The knowledge of geography, physics, mathematics, literature, law, which he regarded so important so far, is nothing unless it is accompanied by belief, towards which Teimuraz himself is moving with such torture, such suffering, and such an internal struggle. Mikhail Javakishvili himself describes this quite remarkably. Teimuraz feels that he has broken with the sinful world and reached the heavenly father whom he had been looking for some time and called on him. The sun looks into the sunless flower Teimuraz, into his soul, and accordingly he struggle with his own double, enters a decisive path. And who will win in this struggle? The empiric who calls on him to yell, die, disappeared from the face of this earth, or other Teimuraz, who is already embarked on the path of they believe, who realized better that knowledge is not sufficient for him to survive. He needs a spiritual basis which he had not had before and which he obtained through such a suffering and torture. The culmination scene of the novel, the episode in which Teimuraz relieves his former wife doubled under a heavy load and puts this load on his own back. And we understand that Teimuraz is not anymore so-called Narodnik public figure by conviction as the author introduces him at the beginning of the novel, but he is already a thoughtful character, character who has moved to another ambivalent liminal dimension, who is looking exactly in the direction of an alternative reality. At the end of the novel, Mikhail Javakishvili compares Teimuraz to Shiom Rimeli, who is one of the greatest saints of Georgian church. Teimuraz prays. He prays every night, and Teimuraz's night prayers resemble the mysterious night of Gethsemane. And if we take artistic transformation to be the principal feature of the genre of novel, the concluding paragraph of Jagos Hisnebi is exactly a proof of the extreme transformation of both the character and the temporal paradigm of the novel. She goes into the depths, down into the earth, into his cave. He sows himself like a seed that must produce a spiritual fruit. And so does Teimuraz. Teimuraz too sows himself. The attempt of the writer to solve the problems introduced by the realistic manner of reflection in the light of the aesthetics of modernism ends in full triumph in the novel. Mikhail Javakishvili is a writer who is oriented towards transforming the real objective data of time into an internal fabric. The main thing for him is to bring to the reader the message that the most important in this world is an individual shining with his identity, a rebellion, a fighter who finds the way of his salvation himself and who will never give way to the masses who are referred to by the pronoun we. Natural Sahelit Chuel.